happy today we have uh today we have uh, professor uh, toshi kota with us and his title is very exciting beyond the neutrino standard very short and crispy title uh, and suits with what we do here so let me briefly introduce uh, toshi uh, uh, you know because some students are also here so i know toshi for a long time Uh, when i was a graduate student and uh, we met we discussed many many times i think we didn't collaborate in a paper right to see uh, no no so, yeah not yet not, <laughs> not yet, yet. <laughs> uh, but we discussed many things yeah uh, so toshi uh, did uh, his phd from japan mm -hmm. in 2003 um, and his thesis was leptonic cp violation search with a neutrino factory and then i think uh, toshi was all over the place in last 15 years i think or 20 years and he was a postdoc he was a jsps fellow at osaka university then he was a postdoc at technical university munich then he was a postdoc at heidelberg germany postdoc at usburg in germany then again postdoc at munich in institute of physics munich and then he took a job as a lecturer in saitama university in japan and then he moved to ecuador as an associate professor he stayed there for a couple of years and then he decided to go for you know an another postdoctoral research career in madrid in spain and where he is now so he has worked on many many issues covering neutrinos bsm and also cosmological neutrinos colliders so you know without wasting any time i would say that uh, toshi you please start and tell us what you have been doing thank you very much for the, this <laughs> kind introduction and uh, thank you very much for giving me a chance to have a seminar today uh, i'm toshi ota in madrid autonoma university uh, i put the title beyond the neutrino standard model uh, to this seminar uh, but it is yeah very abstract and it can mean many things uh oops oops <laughs> uh okay <laughs> uh okay the title is quite abstract uh, but here i list uh, the topics i was planning to discuss in this talk so the first the new physics contribution to the neutrino less double beta decay process And second, the cosmic neutrino spectrum observed at the ice cube experiment as a probe of new physics. And third, the bottom-up approach to the uh, new, uh, proton decay operator. And fourth, the, an electroweak variogenesis scenario with an extended neutrino sector. But during the preparation of the talk, I realized that it's simply too much. So I think I should concentrate on the first two. Uh, and, but uh, I think somewhere I will upload uh, the slide and I prepare all the topics so that if you are interested in the uh, last two topics, and I, also, I am also happy to discuss on the last two topics. Uh, but let's uh, concentrate. Let me concentrate on the first two topics. In this talk, the uh, okay, let's start uh, with the first topic that is the new physics contribution to the neutrino less double beta decay processes. But before going to the main part uh, of my talk, I would like to briefly review the uh, basic concept of the neutrino oscillation and uh, the current status of the oscillation experiments. Uh, I think the audience of this talk uh, uh, may be uh, familiar with uh, the uh, neutrino oscillation and the experimental results, but uh, let me do it uh, in a slide or two. Uh, the neutrino oscillation probability is calculated with uh, calculated by the sandwiching the time evolution operator exponential minus IHL 
with the uh, initial state nu alpha and the final state nu beta. And H is the propagation Hamiltonian that is described with the mass differences of the neutrino, neutrinos and the contribution from the interaction between neutrinos and the matter uh, in the baseline of the neutrino propagation. And just for simplicity, is suppose the neutrino uh, neutrinos are propagating in vacuum, then the matter effect term uh, is omitted, and the uh, uh, the time evolution operator in the vacuum mass eigenbasis uh, is diagonal, and the uh, mixing between the mass eigenstate and the flavor eigenstate uh, can be described with the uh, unitary matrix that is called the lepton mixing matrix, PMNS matrix. And that matrix can be parameterized with uh, three mixing angles, theta 2, 3, theta 1, 3, theta 1, 2, and the delta. And substituting these components to the to this formula, uh, you can see that the in vacuum, the oscillation probability it can be reduced to this simple and uh, well-known formula. So, from this, you can see that the by measuring the amplitude of the oscillation uh, probability, you can measure that these combinations of the lepton mixing matrices and the frequency of the uh, uh, oscillation probability tells us the uh, uh, mass differences. In the case where the neutrinos are propagating in matter, the, of course the oscillation probability becomes more involved. Uh, however, the basic concept is the same. So the, by measuring the oscillation probability, we can measure the uh, oscillation parameters and uh, uh, each oscillation experiment has different energy and baseline lengths. So uh, by using various neutrino experiments, we can access to the different parts of the uh, uh, mixing matrix. For example, uh, by measuring the disappearance oscillation probability for new mu to new mu, uh, we can measure the uh, uh, mixing angle theta to three, and so on. And uh, yeah, that thanks to the continuous effort of the experimentalist uh, in the last uh, twenty-five years or so, uh, now we know most of the oscillation parameters and that's really amazing so they just 25 years ago we didn't know anything at all but now we know almost everything and here is a summary of the uh, uh, result of the uh, oscillation experiments and these curves are the uh, delta chi square function with one degree of freedom so the uh, bottom of the uh, curves uh, indicates the best fit value of the of the of each oscillation parameter and as you can see that the uh, we have already some sensitivity to the uh, cp violating phase delta but here is a three sigma range so the uh, uh, the delta has not been determined precisely yet and we still have uh, two choices for the mass hierarchy so the the sign of the delta m31 square. And you can see that there's some preference for the plus sign, so the normal hierarchy case, but the difference between the normal hierarchy and the inverted hierarchy is uh, less than three sigma. And the, uh, the mixing angle theta 2, 3 eh, has not been determined precisely yet because of the degenerate solution. So in the next generation uh, neutrino oscillation experiments, uh, we expect to, to fix these uh, uh, parameters and how to do that. Uh, that I think uh, uh, Sanjeev knows better than I, so that he is expert of the uh, precision measurement of the oscillation parameters in the future experiments. 
um, yeah, this is the current status of the oscillation uh, experiment. And this result, these results can be summarized uh, also in this plot. Here, the uh, horizontal axis is the sum of the neutrino masses. And the vertical axis is the so-called the uh, effect with neutrino mass. That is this combination of the neutrino mass and the mixings. And uh, here we have additional uh, complex phases. Actually, this uh, they should be included in the uh, left mixing matrix, uh, but I didn't do that in the previous slide because uh, uh, they do not appear in the uh, oscillation probability at all. But they play a, an important role in the neutrino less double beta decay experiment. And these two bands, uh, blue and red, uh, are the two sigma parameter regions suggested by the uh, global fit of the oscillation uh, experiments. And red for the normal ordering plus sign of the delta M31 square and uh, the blue one for the inverted ordering. And the neutrino less double beta decay experiment uh, is sensitive to this effect with neutrino mass. So uh, the constraint from the neutrino less double beta decay experiment cut out the upper part of these two bands. And the cosmology is now uh, placing uh, the stringent constraint to the sum of the neutrino masses. Uh, yeah, now the uh, cosmological bound is quite strict, strong. That is the level of uh, 0.15 electron volt, 0.15 electron volt. And uh, as we have seen in the previous slide, the neutrino oscillation experiment uh, prefer the normal ordering, but uh, still we have two choices. So now we are really uh, chasing the neutrinos into the corner of the parameter space. And we expect that we can improve this plot in the next decade because uh, we have uh, many experiments uh, about the neutrinos. And uh, uh, yeah, that we have telescopes and satellites uh, with which uh, we can measure the uh, large scale structure, baryon acoustic oscillation, etc., cosmological observ observables more precisely. And with which we can uh, constrain the sum of the neutrino masses more tightly. And here I only showed the legend experiment, but there are several different uh, plans for the neutrino less double beta decay experiments. And uh, once the uh, next generation long baseline neutrino oscillation experiments uh, will start during and the T2 hyper K, uh, then they will, in, they will soon determine the mass hierarchy. So really we are chasing the neutrinos in the corner of the parameter space. And we hope that at some point in future, uh, we will really, catch the true parameter point uh, somewhere on these two bands. But uh, it is also possible that we will face a conflict among these experiments. For example, uh, cosmology will exclude the inverted ordering case. So this part is excluded. And the neutral oscillation will suggest the normal ordering then they are consistent with each other. However, the neutrino less double beta decay will be discovered just under the uh, current experimental bound. Then it suggests an inverted ordering. So then we will face a conflict. Then uh, what can we learn from that conflict? That's the topic uh, I would like to discuss in the first half of uh, this seminar. Toshi, in your previous slide, uh, yeah. what is this NME? This uh... ah, NME. This is a nuclear matrix element. Oh, nuclear uh, matrix element. Yes. For yeah, this yeah, yeah. double beta decay. 
Yes, yes. So the uh, new, the result bound from the new, new neutrino less double beta decay experiment has some uncertainty, uh, and the, that uncertainty uh, mainly comes from the uncertainty of the nuclear matrix element, and uh, yeah, termination oh. of the nu nuclear matrix element is very important to, to constrain the uh, uh, neutrino masses. Yes. So I have a question. Yeah. So, given the present understanding about nuclear matrix element calculation, theoretically, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it is a theoretical input when you predict the bound from a given experiment, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. experiment. Do you think that the present uncertainty can wash out this connection between law, uh, oscillation experiment and uh, double beta decay experiment? Like, suppose tomorrow I say, that your neutrino mass ordering is inverted ordering uh -huh. from oscillation data. Yeah. And you don't see still any neutrino less double beta decay signature. Mm -hmm. Can you say that, okay, uh, this can be because my beta decay, neutrino less double beta decay rate is uncertain uh, by this nuclear matrix element, and that's why this mismatch is happening. Can you buy that argument? Uh, so far, yes. So the uh, so far the nuclear matrix element uncertainty is quite big, but uh, yeah, they, I think the theorists are doing continuous effort. So the, <laughs> I believe that at some point uh, uh, they 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 will they will uh, make the uncertainty smaller. And also we have various neutrino less double beta decay experiments and using different uh, types of atoms. So the uh, uh, if we really have the uh, large pyrona neutrino mass, and then the, we should have multiple uh, observations, so that then the, we are sure something is going on. So that some some neutrino is really um, uh, mediating that uh, neutrino rest beta decay uh, process. So to I be think. to be precise, can I lower mm -hmm. the uh, inverted ordering that blue uh, band? Further mm -hmm. down, using the uncertainty in matrix element. So, uh, I don't think so. So that this this blue band is uh, simply determined by the uh, oscillation data, mm -hmm. and the bound just coming from this uh, this uh, uh, yeah from from uh, above. Mm -hmm. So the and the, yeah the the bound from the neutrino less double beta decay have some widths because of, due to the uncertainty, but uh, the, this blue band itself uh, doesn't move. So this uncertainty, do you think that it can cover the blue area and also it can go down further and cover the blue and red area both? Because then the conflict will. Suppose your mm -hmm. uncertainty is less mm -hmm. than the uncertain blue and red band, then you are through, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Suppose you measure the new, uh, new, uh, neutrino less double beta decay with some uncertainty, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that uncertainty is not going to cover this band parameter space, then they are separate, still mm -hmm. separate, right? And, and you can say that I can't take the freedom of the matrix element to explain this mismatch that you are going to explain next, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because I can take the standpoint that, okay, you don't know your matrix element well, and that's why, you know, still cosmology can be in accordance with the oscillation data, uh, mm -hmm. double beta decay can be uh, in accordance with the oscillation data. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is my question. How big is the uncertainty, basically? How big? The, uh, so far, this big, but uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, how can I, how can I say it? Uh, uh, but once the once we have the signal, uh, the of course to constrain the uh, 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 the uh, effective neutrino mass, mm -hmm. then the, this nuclear matrix element the uncertainty is important. But the once we have the signal, so that when if we will have the really the signal of the neutrino is double beta decay, mm -hmm. then the. Uh, of course, there is still uncertainty in the interpretation of that signal to the uh, uh, neutrino mass. 
but the, we are sure uh, that 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 is the signal. There is a signal, so that uh, we can we can we can how can I say that discuss the that uh, conflict. I think. So no, if we so see a signal now, uh -huh. that can be also indirect hint that the ordering is inverted. Right. Uh, present generation yes, experiment yes. can see a signal. Yes. Yes. The inverted. It should be inverted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And this legend is a future experiment, right? This yes. is that bound you are quoting. Yes. Legend is, I think, the uh, upgrade of Gerda somehow. I think the okay. German name. Yeah. Experiment. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. For yeah. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, so if we will face a conflict, then the, what can we learn? So the, of course, then we need a new physics. And this is the diagram of the standard contribution to the neutrino less double beta decay. And if we will face a conflict, we may need the new physics contribution. Here I don't specify the origin of the, uh, 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 this uh, new physics contribution, just I parameterize it as an effective operator. And this effective operator, six fermion operator, uh, the mass dimension of this effective operator is nine. So the, it, should, it should appear uh, with the suppression uh, with the fifth power of the new physics scale in the Lagrangian. And by comparing the quotient, uh, quotient of the standard contribution and the new physics contribution, and you can find that the, the neutrino less double beta decay experiment that is sensitive to the neutrino mass uh, with the size of 0 0.05 electron volt is also sensitive to the uh, new physics contribution with the uh, new physics scale. Uh, with a size of the order one TeV. So this means that the neutron less double beta decay experiment is uh, complementary to the table scale collider experiment. And that statement is not new, actually. So the, uh, there have been many studies uh, on the uh, complementarity between the neutron less double beta decay experiment and the table scale collider experiment. Uh, in various contexts in, since the uh, uh, 1980s. And now we are interested in the origin of this uh, effective operator. And the effective operator in general uh, is supposed to be made of uh, the fundamental interactions mediated by some heavy fields with the mass around the new physics scale. And now we are interested in the situation that the, we will see the uh, new physics contribution in the next generation neutron less double beta decay experiment. So that this new physics scale is should not be so high. So that that should be some something around one TeV. Then uh, here is a list of the uh, color and electromagnetic charges uh, of the mediator fields that can appear in the decomposition of the effective operators that is relevant to the neutrino less double beta decay processes. And uh, uh, these charges, the interactions of the mediator fields are important uh, for the uh, search strategy uh, for the mediator fields at the LHC. And here, uh, we categorize uh, the mediator fields according to the uh, uh, interactions. So the red one is the colored dichroic uh, field. So dichroic means that the, they have the interaction with two quarks. And the gray one is the dichroic, but the color singlet. And uh, orange is the uh, dileptum that has uh, the uh, interaction with two electrons. And the uh, uh, green one, green ones are the famous left quarks. Uh, they are color triplet fields. 
and uh, blue and the CM, they are the uh, colored fermion field. And uh, the, the field without any marker is a neutral fermion field that can be the uh, uh, standard model neutrino or uh, right-handed neutrino or yeah, sterile neutrino or something like that. Ooh. Um, yeah. So now let's check the uh, current status of the LHC search for the each mediator field one by one. So the first one is the dike walk. And uh, yeah, this dike walk is this S field and they have the uh, interaction with two quarks QQS or UDS or something like that. And so that they can be produced through that quark quark interaction and they can decay to two quarks, so the uh, two jets. So two quarks mean two jets. So that they can be quite easily produced at the LHC and the signal is very clear. So that it's the resonance in two jets. And here is a result of the resonance search uh, in two jets uh, at the CMS experiment. And they don't see any any resonance, any bump in the in the in the uh, cross uh, to to jet cross section, and then uh, if we assume that the coupling of this uh, dichroic interaction as the order of uh, one, then the uh, this result uh, set to the constraint to the mass of the dichroic field at the level of three TeV. And that uh, constraint is more or less the same level of the constraint from the uh, Newton less double beta decay experiment. So the dike walks are quite tightly uh, constrained at the LHC. The next one is the left quarks. So she, uh, the, yeah. the work you mentioned previous, this Bonnet et al., this is uh, your work, right? That ah, yes, yes. The bonnet, bonnet or this so is my. You are there in that work, no? The, yes. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, yes. Mm -hmm. Ouch. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> this is a left quarks. So the okay, the left quarks are the triplet under the SU three color, so that they appear produced through the, through the gluon and they decay to uh, lepton and uh, jet. So the signal is two jet and two electron, uh, electron and positron. And the current bound at the LHC is the 1.25 TeV. So it's actually not that strong. Uh, so I, uh, how can we improve this bound at the LHC? So, of course, the first thing we can think of is the increase of the collision energy. But uh, unfortunately, the uh, collision energy at the LHC is fixed. So, but still, we have a chance to uh, improve the bound to the left quarks by using the single production process, this production process. The bottleneck of this pair production process uh, is the phase space so that we have to pair produce the heavy particles, but uh, uh, in the single production process, we have only one uh, heavy particle so that it is not from the uh, phase space, but uh, the single production process, the cross section is quite small, so the, we can access to this process only at the high luminosity upgrade of the LHC. But with the high luminosity LHC, we have a chance to uh, constrain the uh, left quarks with the mass higher than 2 TeV. And the next one is dilepton. Okay, the di there is a official study uh, at the Atlas by the Atlas collaboration on the uh, dilepton. But in that study, uh, uh, they assume that the dilepton is uh, produced by the quark quark interaction. So they, their dilepton is also dike quark, and it is not the case for us. 
but uh, this dielectron field uh, is anyway the electromagnetic charge. So they can be pair produced through the uh, Drelian process, this process, and can decay to the uh, two, two electrons. And uh, these people uh, studied the uh, LHC bound on the, uh, this uh, doubly charged scalar field. And they found that the LHC bound is not that strong. Currently, the less than one TV, so the 800 GB or something. And even with the high luminosity upgrade of the LHC, the uh, only the bound only reach at the 1.2 TV or so. But they uh, said that the uh, lepton collider ILC. It can do a great job to constrain this type of dielectron field. So IRC 250, of course, it cannot produce the uh, dielectron with the mass uh, uh, around TB, but uh, this IRC 250 can place the bound, uh, can exclude the uh, dielectron field with the mass around seven or eight TB through the precision measurement of the Baba scattering. That's quite powerful. And the colored fermion field, uh, okay, they are colored, so anyway, they can pair produce that the gluon, so that it should be very easily uh, produced at the LHC. And the constraint uh, depends on the uh, decay products, but uh, typically they are constrained around the uh, Ma their masses are co constrained around the 1 TB. And I think the finally, the uh, and the most in interesting uh, mediator field is the uh, neutral fermion field. And neutral fermion field, table scale neutral fermion fields are very popular among the neutrino phenomenologists. They appear uh, in various models. So the left right symmetric model or a table scale seesaw model etc and the typical signal the typical and most wanted signal of the table scale uh, neutral fermion field is this uh, uh, pair production of the charged lepton with the same sign and as you can see that this LHC signal is exactly the same uh, diagram of the new physics contribution to the neutrino rest double beta decay process. So that it's a direct test of the new physics uh, contribution to the neutrino rest double beta decay processes. And this WR field is a di dike walk. So the as we have seen, the dike work has already been strongly constrained. So uh, the, this process, uh, so we have no chance to see this process at the uh, neutrino rest double beta decay experiment in the next generate next uh, next experiment because the LHC constraint is too too strong. However. Uh, if we assume that this process is mediated by the standard model W boson and the table scale neutral fermion field, and the uh, bound from the LHC is quite weak, so the way weaker than the uh, current bound from the neutrino rest double beta decay experiment. So this process may be the uh, good candidate uh, of the new physics contribution if we will see the new physics contribution in the next generation neutrino rest double beta decay experiment. Okay, the, let me summarize the first part of my talk. So the, uh, we will have a lot of experiments, neutrino experiments and the telescope, satellite, etc. in near future. So, uh, they will give uh, uh, high quality, high precision information. And it, it may be possible that we will see some conflict among them. 
then that's the hint for the new physics. And the neutrino less double beta decay experiment are sensitive not only to the neutri Majorana neutrino mass, but also to the new physics at the table scale. So the neutrino less double beta decay experiments are complementary to LHC. So the when we see the uh, some new physics uh, contribution in the neutrino less double beta decay experiment, uh, we have a chance to test that at the LHC. So that's the first part of my talk. And uh, let's move on to the next topic. OK. Uh, yeah. The uh, next topic is the cosmic neutrinos uh, observed at the ice cube experiment as a probe to new physics. So as you know, the ice cube experiment uh, is collecting the uh, charged current uh, high energy neutrino event uh, in the ice at the South Pole. And uh, after the discovery of the first event, uh, that's some 10 years ago, uh, they are continuously collecting the data and now the spectrum of the high energy neutrino events. And this spectrum is of course, is a very important hint for the, uh, to understand the, uh, to understand the uh, high energy astrophysical objects. For example, the black holes, uh, blazers, gamma ray burst, active galactic nuclei, etc. Uh, but I am not that uh, I am not expert on that topic. Uh, here I would like to discuss uh, that this spectrum can also be used for the hint for the new physics associated with neutrinos. Uh, yeah, but before going to the discussion on the new physics. I would like to briefly review the uh, recent uh, updates of our knowledge on the sources of these uh, high energy neutrino events. So where do they come from? So uh, the ice cube experiment are seeing the high energy neutrino events continuously. So the, we are quite sure the high energy neutrinos are coming to the earth. And, and we are also sure they are not the atmospheric neutrinos. So the, the, the spectrum are completely different and the atmospheric neutrinos cannot be so high energy. And then where do they come from? Uh, by using the uh, muon track event, we can spot the direction of the uh, direction to the source of the cosmic neutrinos. And, uh, uh, the direction of the muon track events uh, do not show any correlation with the galactic. So it doesn't depend on the direction of our galaxy. So this means that the, uh, this strongly suggests that uh, the, they come from the sources outside of our galaxy. And uh, our Milky Way galaxy, the size of our Milky Way galaxy is uh, Order 10 kiloparsec. So uh, the high energy neutrinos observed at the ice cube uh, traveled uh, more than, I don't know, 100 kiloparsec, megaparsec, or even gigaparsec. Yeah, that's really traveled a long distance. And in 2017, a uh, source of uh, high energy neutrino event was identified for the first time. The ice cube uh, detected the neutrino uh, that comes from, uh, that came from the, this particular blazer that is located uh, two gigaparsec away. Yeah, it's really, really far away. But this blazer uh, is not is, is the source of this particular event, but cannot be the source sources of the all the 
cosmic neutron in the events observed at the ice cube. So the, the other events come from the other direction. And uh, uh, recently, the ice cube uh, also showed the sky map of the uh, cosmic neutrino events with the energy higher than the 1 TeV. And they found that uh, hot spots of the cosmic neutrinos in the sky. And one of the hot spots corresponds to the uh, this astrophysical object, NGC 1068. And the which is supposed to uh, contain the supermassive black hole. And uh, uh, and it is actually the nearest supermassive black hole from us. And the blazers are also considered that uh, they contain the uh, black holes. So the uh, black holes seems to be the major candidate of the sources of the cosmic neutrinos, high energy cosmic neutrinos. And here I would like to introduce the uh, study by the astrophysicist. Uh, and yeah, the first of all, that these dots and crosses are the uh, observed fluxes of the cosmic rays and cosmic neutrinos and gamma rays. And these astrophysicists uh, assumed the black holes are the uh, sources of the cosmic rays. And they assumed uh, some distribution, reasonable distribution of the black holes and calculated the uh, fluxes of the cosmic neutrinos and gamma rays associated with this uh, cosmic rays produced at the black holes. And then the, their predictions are the, these thick lines and they are more or less is consistent with the observations. Okay, the gamma rays, uh, the observed values, observed flux is uh, higher than the prediction, but uh, for the gamma rays, there are other uh, sources than the black holes, so the, they are consistent. And yeah, and this is very interesting and uh, yeah, great because the, uh, now we are really understanding not single object, single astrophysical object and a single observation, but that we are now really understanding the whole system that can produce these multiple multi-messenger astrophysics. And the astrophysics often predict the uh, single simple power law spectrum. So that is a straight line in the log plot. But you can see that the uh, uh, observed uh, cosmic neutrino spectrum seems to have some structure here. It seems that there is a break here. Yeah. So if we have this, some characteristic uh, structure uh, on the uh, cosmic neutrino spectrum instead of the simple power law spectrum straight line, then what can we learn from that? That's the topic uh, I would like to address in the second half of the talk. So this is the latest spectrum reported by the uh, ice cube collaboration. And if we have the, if we find the structure, some characteristic structure on this spectrum, then the, uh, what can we learn? So what are the possible explanations? Maybe is some of the events are produced by the decay of the dark matter, super heavy dark matter field with the mass of the peta electron volt, then uh, we should have more like the line spectrum rather than the continuous spectrum. Or uh, if we have some new physics contribution in the uh, detection process in the ice cube, then we should see the bump in the uh, uh, spectrum. So these 
to events maybe the uh, maybe resulted from the new physics contribution of the uh, in the in the detection process or uh, maybe the uh, cosmic neutrinos uh, get the scattering with the cosmic neutrino background during their travel to the earth then we should see the gap in the spectrum. And I would like to discuss this third possibility. So, so where is the glacial resonance event on, on this spectrum? I think the glacial resonance is here. So that this, uh, uh, this one, yeah, here you don't see the, uh, here they don't include that event, uh, that observed event in this, uh, uh, spectrum, but the, I think the glacial resonance, if we have the glacial resonance, it should appear here, I think. This is new e bar electron scattering, right? New e bar electron scattering. Exactly, exactly. And it is uh, in some PEV range, no? Some PEV range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. It's... But Ice Cube now claims that they have seen, they have discovered glacial resonance. Yes, yes. They have a so... paper, PRL paper, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then the question is why also there is a gap, right? Like uh, the gap is explained by the glacial resonance, this gap. I'm not talking about the first gap, mm -hmm. but here, yeah. this gap, this gap. So this is just like we have, you know, some happening there. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. The, 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 the event. Okay. Yeah. So this is not that serious. Okay. Uh, new new oh. <laughs> uh, So the here we introduced this new neutrino neutrino interaction mediated with uh, the new field Z prime. And if we have this uh, new neutrino interaction, uh, it can affect the uh, cosmic neutrino spectrum in the following way. So suppose the uh, cosmic neutrino, high energy neutrinos are produced at the distant sources and travel to the earth. Then uh, we know that the uh, space between the sources and the earth uh, is, not, is not empty. So from the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, we know that the, our universe is uh, filled with the cosmic neutrino background. And if we have this new neutrino neutrino uh, interaction, then the cosmic neutrino with a particular energy uh, gets the resonant scattering and loses the energy. And the important point is that the uh, the cosmic neutrino with the other energy that cannot satisfy the uh, resonant condition do not lose the energy. So that this means that the cosmic only the cosmic neutrino with a particular energy is kicked out uh, from the uh, spectrum. So we should see the gap uh, in the spectrum if we have this type of neutrino neutrino interaction. And for for the example of this type of interaction, we take the gauge to U1 L mu minus L tau interaction. And here we have the two parameter, two new parameters, the coupling G Z prime and the mass of the uh, Z prime boson field, Z prime mediator field. And these two parameters must satisfy uh, the following two conditions to make the gap in the cosmic neutrino spectrum. The first one is the, yeah, the mass of the mediator field should be around MeV so that the uh, cosmic neutrinos with the uh, energy of the peta electron volt uh, can satisfy this resonant condition. So Toshi, can you explain it again, you know, for the students, like what is exactly, so you, uh, what is happening in your model? Like uh, this high energy cosmic neutrinos are coming 
and energy cosmic energy is coming yeah and you have this really low energy neutrinos everywhere this cosmic yes. neutrino background so yes. are you saying that this high energy cosmic neutrinos on the way may interact with this relic neutrinos which are in the background exactly 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 if we have this new neutrino interaction in the standard model we uh, we cannot uh, we cannot have that uh, interaction so that z standard model z prime uh, standard model z boson is too too heavy but the if we have the uh, uh, this new neutrino neutrino interaction mediated with the uh, uh, with the mediator field with the mass around the MEB, then that we have a chance to have the scattering. So wh why you need to break this symmetry L mu minus L tau for neutrino oscillation? Uh, to break the sim why we need to break the symmetry so the. Uh, we need because the, to give the mass to z prime. You need to break yeah, yeah. the symmetry, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, so why? Why? Uh, the oscillation. Yeah. Well, but uh, here we don't uh, uh, we don't assume anything on the on the on the model. Uh, we don't assume anything on the flavor flavor uh, structure of the neutrinos. Uh, we just uh, need the massive boson to make the gap in the spectrum so that we just uh, yeah put the mass to the to the to the to the z prime boson so what is the typical wave here typical what the wave vacuum expectation value uh vacuum expectation value i think the uh, the mass of the uh uh, this z prime boson is meb and the coupling of the this uh, uh, gauge interaction is 10 to minus 4 mm -hmm. so the uh, the wave should be the uh, uh, gb or the 10 gb or something like that typically so in principle in your model this mass of this z prime can be anything coupling also can be anything yes can be anything so coupling and the mass these are the two free parameters in your lagrangian right this is exactly prime. yeah uh, this is the coupling and the mass yeah yes uh, but let me uh, just one thing so when these neutrinos are coming they can interact anytime because this cosmic neutrino background is everywhere right on the path exactly yes so so like this is like a like like a scattering like it just interacts or it is like MSW, like it keeps on interacting and accures some potential. That can also no. happen, right? Uh, that can also happen uh, in the intermediate uh, well. But uh, neutron propagation is, uh, this uh, long distance neutron propagation is uh, described with the, uh, without I think uh, the uh, we uh, yeah we have we have that scattering not the MSW like uh, potential. No, I, I'm just thinking that you are saying that at some point there will be a scattering. But yes. uh, think like when neutrino passes through matter, you have electrons. Mm -hmm. Now I replace that picture. Neutrinos are moving, but you don't have electron. You have cosmic neutrino background. And mm -hmm. suppose if I write an interaction between this neutrino, high energy neutrino and cosmic neutrino, relic neutrino, mm -hmm. and this potential can get also added up if it is a coherent forward elastic scattering, mm -hmm. that kind of scenario is also one can cook. Like this is just like a scattering one. It is like a detection, like you, mm -hmm. you yeah. are having one type this process, right? Mm -hmm. The, whatever you have been writing, it is just like a one-time process, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. But what I am saying that what if this neutrino is continuously scattering with the ambient conspic neutrino background and see some change, that is possible? Uh, not sure, but I think it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, yeah, the, I think the, 
uh, this neutrino uh, from the distant source, uh, I think the coherence is lost at the source. Yes, the, the so the, wave packets are separate, traveling separately. Yeah, yes. yeah. So mm -hmm. the, I think we cannot have that uh, uh, coherent propagation of the neutrinos. So the, that picture breaks down, I think. Okay. It yeah. is just they're scattering and they're getting lost, basically. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I okay. think so. I understand. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, the, I, I already showed that big condition, but the uh, coupling should be larger than 10 to minus 4. Uh, that, uh, that, that condition comes from that the, we should have the scattering at least once during the travel. Otherwise, this cannot affect the uh, uh, spectrum. So this means that the mean free pass of the cosmic neutrino should be shorter than the distance between the source and the earth. And that condition uh, can be, uh, uh, here we assume that the typical distance is over one gigaparsec, that is the uh, size of the visible universe, roughly speaking. And that condition uh, can be interpreted to the condition to the coupling. And uh, now we know that the coupling should be larger than 10 to minus 4 to have the gap in the cosmic neutrino spectrum. OK, then uh, we want to show that I want to show the, our numerical calculation of the cosmic neutrino spectrum uh, with the new leptonic force. And uh, we want to check the. Uh, we want to check if we have the gap. Really, really, we have the gap or not. Uh, but before going to our numerical calculation, I would like to discuss the uh, phenomenology of this new leptonic force. And that leptonic force is also good for the other observables. Uh, for example, the muon G minus two. So one of the biggest news on particle physics in the last year was the new measurement of the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon uh, confirmed uh, the old uh, experimental result. That means that the, they confirmed the discrepancy between the experimental measurement and the standard model prediction. And the result is here. So that this is an experimental average and that is deviated from the standard model prediction at the level of four sigma. And uh, yeah, this is exciting. Ah, okay, the first, uh, if, we uh, if we use the lattice calculation uh, for the uh, hadronic contribution to the mu and G minus two, this discrepancy becomes smaller. Uh, so we should wait before drawing the conclusion. But uh, uh, this is, quite exciting so that this is interesting hint for the new physics beyond the standard model. And it is well known that if we have the new leptonic interaction mediated by Z prime, okay, the, uh, this muon G minus two experiment is only sensitive to the muon interaction. So that if we have this muonic interaction mediated by Z, Z, Z prime bosom, uh, and the mass of the Z prime boson and the coupling of uh, between the muon and the Z prime uh, take the value uh, indicated with this red band, then this new contribution can explain this discrepancy. And interestingly, that this red band shares the uh, parameter region that makes a gap in the ice cube spectrum. So here is MeV, 10 MeV, and here is uh, several times 10 to minus 4 for the coupling. And uh, uh, there is another uh, tension that can be explained uh, with the uh, new leptonic force. That is the H0 tension. So what is the H0 tension? Uh, so now uh, we know how the universe was at the uh, recombination era in the early universe uh, through the uh, cosmic microwave background measurement uh, by the Planck satellite. And uh, by using the standard cosmology, uh, we can extrapolate that uh, early universe information uh, to today. 
And we can estimate the Hubble parameter today by using the CMB observation. And we can compare that to, uh, to that uh, Hubble parameter determined by the uh, measurement of the stars, the observation of the stars with telescopes. And the result is they don't match. So they don't agree with each other. So this is the Hubble parameter estimated from the CMB and they are the Hubble parameters determined by the telescopes. And yeah, so now we are in this talk, we are interested in the leptonic force, the new leptonic force. So the, our question is, can new leptonic force contribute to this Hubble parameter and by chance relax the tension? And my answer is yes. And that can be understood uh, in the following way. So the CMB observable is the combination of these, para these quantities, sound horizon at the recombination error and, and the angular distance to the recombination error. Um, then if we have the additional uh, radiation component, then that increased the Hubble parameter in the early universe, the Hubble parameter in the radiation dominant era. And the Hubble parameter appear in the denominator of the sound horizon, so the sound, sound horizon should decrease. But we observe this CMB observable, so that uh, we have to decrease also the uh, angular distance to keep the observable. Then to to decrease the uh, angular distance, we have to have the larger Hubble parameter today. And this correlation between the radiation component and the Hubble parameter can be seen in this plot provided by the Planck collaboration. So when we saw so that this colored part is the uh, estimation uh, by the Planck observation and uh, uh, if we have the uh, standard radiation component, then the, we have the tension in the H0, so the Hubble parameter today. But if we have additional radiation component, the Hubble uh, estimation goes this way and uh, we can relax the tension. And how, the, uh, how can the uh, new leptonic force uh, uh, participate to this discussion? Um, that is the following. So the, uh, we have the new mediator field Z prime. That can be a produced uh, thermally at the, in the early universe. And that annihilation uh, gives the energy to the neutrinos that can decay to the neutrinos. So that heats the neutrino. So the, the, the temperature of neutrinos in this uh, new physics scenario is higher than that in the uh, standard cosmology. So we have uh, more radiation, uh, our radiation uh, get more energy so that we have additional radiation component so that we should have the larger uh, Hubble parameter today and we can relax the tension. And the author of this paper showed that the uh, if we have the new leptonic force and uh, the mass of the uh, mediator field is around 10 to 11 MeV on this blue band, uh, we can have an uh, we can have an appropriate amount of the additional radiation component uh, to relax the tension and uh, the interesting thing is this blue band shares the uh, parameter region that is good for the muon G minus two tension. And also that share the parameter region that can make the gap in the ice cube spectrum. So now let's check the cosmic neutron spectrum uh, with, the, with this new leptonic force. So we take this, uh, this choice of the parameters and check the uh, calculate the uh, cosmic neutrino spectrum numerically. And then you can clearly see the gap in the spectrum. So, uh, and that fits to the uh, obse observed spectrum. Of course, the uh, observed sp the statistics is still not, 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 not high enough 
to determine the shape of the spectrum. But it is interesting to point out that the ice cube observation uh, may be able to test the new physics scenario that is related to the muon G minus two and uh, the H zero tension. And uh, uh, this new leptonic force can be tested also at the Bele two experiment or the near detector of the Dune experiment, uh, but they cannot cover the, this red band fully. Uh, so maybe we need uh, some muon beam dump experiment or something to cover all the red band region. But uh, last week, Friday, <laughs> a paper appeared on archive that shows that the next generation uh, uh, dark matter experiment, dark matter direct detection experiment uh, can be sensitive to this type of new leptonic force. Uh, through the solar neutrino coherent scattering. And uh, uh, they showed that the next generation experiment can cover the red band region. So the, that good for the muon G minus two. I have to check the details of this paper. It appeared just last Friday. So the, uh, but if it is true, then the, it is really, really nice. Okay, finally, I would like to show the, some details of the numerical calculation of the cosmic neutrino. So that this is the equation, uh, differential equation that describes the transfer of the cosmic neutrino. Uh, yeah, the by solving, by integrating this differential equation from the source to the earth, uh, we can get to the number of the uh, cosmic neutrinos at the ice cube detector. And the uh, first term in the left hand, uh, right hand side is the energy loss due to the, uh, describes the energy loss due to the expansion of the universe. And the second term uh, describes the injection of the cosmic neutrinos from the sources. So the, we, uh, we assume some distribution of the sources. And the third term is the important term. So that it uh, describes the uh, scattering between the cosmic neutrino and the cosmic neutrino background. So thanks to this term, we have the gap. And the fourth and the fifth term are the so-called regeneration term. So the, uh, this term describes the effect that the scattered cosmic neutrino enters the spectrum again, but with the lower energy. And so by solving this, uh, e equation by uh, uh, numerically, we can get this spectrum. So uh, let me summarize the second part. So uh, the non-power law structure in the cosmic neutron spectrum may, may give us a hint for the new physics associated with neutrinos. And the uh, new leptonic force mediated with uh, maybe particle uh, can make a gap in the spectrum and that also good for the muon G minus two and the H zero tension. So the final summary, so I think I should not repeat them. So the, uh, my final message is so that in the next decade, we will have a lot of experiments and maybe we will find the hint for new physics beyond the standard neutrino model. So the uh, stay tuned on neutrino experiments and also other experiments, cosmology, etc. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot Tosi for your <laughs> comprehensive seminar and showing us you know, the use of the data from neutrino experiments and the complementary with the collider and also double beta decay experiment. So it was really interesting. So mm -hmm. now um, the floor is open for questions. Uh, let me first read. There are a couple of questions are on the chat box. So Toshi, can we take those questions? Hey, yeah, yeah, sure. So there was a question uh, that uh, from a student, I believe that uh, are these new physics neutrino searches are a part of non-standard interaction NSI. Mm -hmm. Could you please shed some light on NSI? 
uh, NSI. Of course, NSI is the, uh, one of the important uh, uh, new physics candidate such that the uh, next generation uh, long vessel neutrino experiment. Uh, here we discussed uh, some different types of uh, different types of uh, new physics scenario, and uh, yeah, they uh, okay. The oops, oh. you can't change the slide. Your <laughs> uh, now 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 it works. Oops. Uh, yes, that's that's different types of uh, okay. That this can also uh, mediate the uh, but okay. That this is uh, L mu minus L tau interaction, so the electron doesn't have the interaction. So the uh, yeah, this this uh, this model uh, doesn't give the uh, non-standard interaction. No, there is a possibility. At, at the there is a possibility, uh, Toshi. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, maybe your boson is MEV range, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. new boson. Mm -hmm. So the range of the interaction is long, right? Kind of. Because mm -hmm. it is like a Yukawa interaction, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the range of the interaction is long. But if you just make the same thing short, okay, short range, mm -hmm then you know you can think of like you know the non-standard interaction when neutrinos are passing through matter and yeah. electron can come in the picture through zz mm -hmm. prime mixing mm -hmm. yes because you have a z prime which is l mu minus l tau exactly. but that z prime can mix with your z and talk yes. to whatever you know electron me or proton or uh, uh, you know neutron whatever is there so yeah. You, you need two things. You need this ZZ prime mixing, number mm -hmm. one. And yeah. number two, to, to, to embed this concept in non-standard interaction in case of long baseline or atmospheric neutrino experiment, where mm -hmm. neutrinos are passing through terrestrial earth, mm -hmm. uh, you need the range also to be short range, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then it is basically NSI, right? Uh, yes. Model dependent NSI. I don't yeah. know whether I'm making it is making sense to you, but uh, I just thought. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in principle, we can have so that as, thanks thanks to that point, uh, thanks to pointing out that point out that so that it's uh, uh, yeah we we can have that uh, uh, non-standard neutrino interaction through the z z prime z mixing. That's true. Uh, but in this model, so the that uh, that is uh, uh, that that mixing happened uh, uh, vacuum polarization type one loop diagram, and that uh, that suppresses the uh, interaction further. And this z prime, the z z prime is also quite strong, uh, quite small, so the ten to minus four or something. So the uh, maybe I, I think that the uh, the nsi in this model is uh, too small to uh, to be observed at the next generation experiment but uh, 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 but you have other li minus lj models like le minus l mu le minus yeah, yeah. L, where electron you can couple with electron basically right? yes yes then then we have a chance yes then, then we have chance Great, great. So uh, then we have another question from Professor Amitabha Rai Chaudhary. He is asking that the solar neutrinos are of the electron type. So I think the paper you just mentioned in your uh, uh, last slide, the recent paper, the solar neutrinos are of the electron type to which Z prime doesn't couple. How does it affect the coherent scattering? So. Uh, this is also in the similar direction. You have L mu minus L tau, Toshi. Do, uh, hello, Toshi, can you hear us? Hello, Toshi, are you there? Hello. 
हेलो ओके लेट्स वेट आई थिंक टोशी हैज लॉस्ट द कनेक्शन लेट्स वेट फॉर अ मिनट सॉरी आई लॉस्ट या सो लेट मी रिपीट टोशी द क्वेश्चन कैन यू हियर मी यस यस ओके द सोलर न्यूट्रिनोज आर ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन टाइप to which the z prime that you mentioned doesn't couple how does it affect the coherent scatter ah yeah so the that's affect uh, through the z a z prime z a mixing uh, okay. that is the uh, yeah vacuum polarization type uh, type uh, diagram so the z prime coming in and we have the vacuum polarization to so the mu and the tau uh, making a circle making a loop and z standard model z uh, comes out then this z coupled to the electron sir does this answer your question uh, yes i have to think about that yes perhaps uh, through a loop uh perhaps i have to think uh, i cannot say right away yes okay thank you yeah thank, thank you, you very much thank you. yeah thank you but uh, toshi can can we also have the other mixing uh in that particular model i i didn't think about the uh, mixing flavor mixing other than that okay yeah okay and any other question please feel free to ask toshi especially students uh, if you have any question uh, hi i i have something to say yes about the thing you were asking like earlier so whether there can be a hi toshi so hi. so whether there can be a long range potential kind of thing in this thing but if you see the mass he is considering is around mev and that yeah. corresponds to a very small range yeah maybe radius of the earth or something no, like that no it's it's very small actually it's if you just simply inverse it it is 10 to the power minus 12 cm mm -hmm. okay very so, short range okay. right and the second thing is actually uh, if you see the cosmic neutrino background there are around 300 neutrinos cosmic cosmological or this c new b 300 neutrinos per cm cube so even if you increase the mass to some significant level or sorry mm -hmm. decrease the mass to some significant level there are not enough uh, cosmic see like cosmic like cosmological neutrino background neutrinos available to have that long range potential kind of effect mm -hmm. so probably that the thing uh, sanjeev was probably hinting towards is not possible with cosmic neutrino background i see i see so when neutrinos are traveling this high energy neutrinos they will not have too many neutrinos around surrounding that right this really yeah, yeah even if you decrease the mask of this uh, uh, gauge boson to ultra light if, even yeah. then there are not enough uh, neutrino background to see so okay but there can be a hard scattering the way toshi mentioned yeah that that is always possible that is already happening is always possible so toshi uh, did you change the power loss spectra of the high energy neutrino cosmic neutrinos or you follow the same power law but at some point due to the scattering you lost that neutrino what is the ultimate concept basically did you change the power law yeah uh, yes so the uh the power law okay the, can you see yeah okay the uh yeah now we have this uh, gap in the spectrum then the we can uh we can uh, uh we can make the power law or the the power of the power law smaller uh to fit the cosmic neutrino spectrum and that is good for the uh, uh prediction Uh, of the spectrum of the gamma ray, gamma rays actually. So that when we have the uh, the uh, cosmic neutrino spectrum with the uh, 
with a steep spectrum that the power, power of the power is high, then the, uh, we should have more gamma rays and that doesn't fit to the, to the uh, observations. So that when we have the gap in the spectrum, then the, we can have the uh, spectrum with the uh, lower uh, power law. So that's really uh, good for the astrophysicist. But whatever 110 events they have seen ice cube so far, they are also predicting this power of the power law, right? Around 2.7 or something if I, yeah, yeah. I forgot. So yes. in your model, you need to change that value also? Apart yes, from yes. This, so the uh, uh -huh, yes. 2.5, 2.3, that, that fits to the, to the, to the observation. So okay. yeah. 2.7, then the uh, astrophysicists they have kind of trouble because the, that cosmic neutrino spectrum uh, predicts the too many gamma rays. Okay. Yeah. So you need to change the power law of the, the power of the power law as well as you need this new physics effect to explain yes. the gap. Okay. Yes. Any other questions or comments for Toshi? Uh, uh, Toshi, I don't see uh, any other questions for the time being, but I'm sure students uh, will have many questions. If they ask you, they can email you or they can talk to you in private. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. And uh, if you kindly can share your slides, because you mentioned at the beginning you had many slides, yeah. but uh, they are all so nicely organized and you know uh, written. We would like to go through, so you share with us, and yes. we can share with you know whoever is interested, and maybe we can put it in our on our social media handle. Okay, yeah. so is that okay with you? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So thanks, Toshi, for joining us today, and I really enjoy it, uh, and I, <laughs> I hope it is the same for others. And thanks for telling us on those so many different fronts, <laughs> and I wish you good luck and stay safe. Toshi. <laughs> you too, you too. Yeah. Okay, Toshi. Yeah. So we can disconnect now? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Toshi. Thank you very much. Thanks bye -bye. for joining. Bye.